Hello everyone. Installing solar panels is an increasingly common thing to do. It's an important part of our journey too, and it would be remiss of me to leave it out of this series of Farmhouse Challenge videos. Like most, ours is a photovoltaic or PV system generating electricity rather than heating water. We've gone a bit further than a basic system by also installing a battery and being somewhat interested in the technology we've made sure that our system can provide information on how it's doing and can be controlled to take full advantage of the sun we get and the electricity tariffs available. So let's start with the basics. Our house conveniently faces southwest or thereabouts and has a clear roof face which is ideal for solar panels. Shading is the enemy of solar panels and even if one or two panels are in shadow that can have a big effect on the whole system. But in our case, apart from a bit of tree shadow in the morning in midwinter as the sun is coming up and a bit in the evening in midsummer when it's going down, we don't have a shading problem. There's plenty of information technology available to installers when making their proposals to you and potential installers we spoke to were generally able to produce satellite views of our house with solar panels superimposed along with calculations of the likely solar power we would produce and so on. We went for 12 panels which are all black and merge in well. Although the solar panels get the attention, the real star of the show is the inverter. That takes the power from the panels and converts it to mains electricity you can use or exports it to the grid. But there's a whole lot more to it than that, particularly if you also have a battery. Battery technology for solar power is well advanced now. Basically, it means that if you generate more solar power than you can use at any time, you can save it for later. You can also charge it up from the electricity grid, and if your tariff gives you a cheap time of day to do that, it's well worth it. We charge ours during the night, and then that cheap electricity is used for the morning heating. The other alternative, if you have power in the battery, is to export it back to the electricity grid for which you can be paid if you're on a suitable tariff with your supplier. So on to our experience of getting a solar system installed. Having done our research we accepted a proposal by one company who had good reviews, a helpful surveyor and a reasonable price. We paid our deposit and a couple of weeks later were given the installation date so we paid the second instalment. But the installation date kept being put back for various reasons and after several weeks of this all contact stopped with phone calls and emails unanswered. We eventually found that the company had ceased trading. Like all the companies we talked to our deposit was protected by insurance though or so we thought. The terms and conditions say that the deposit is only covered for 90 days from the date of acceptance and we had almost reached that and it only covered a deposit up to 25% of the total cost and the cover stopped as soon as you paid a further instalment. So we didn't satisfy their conditions and we lost our money. It appears that there is one company who provides insurance for most renewable energy installers. Our heat pump installers, see a separate video on the subject, used a different insurance company but at the same address and with identical terms and conditions as did the solar panel installers we eventually used. Those successful installers asked for the deposit payment and the second payment at the same time as soon as we placed the order, since they were expecting to install very quickly. We pointed out that this meant the deposit protection insurance was instantly invalid, something they hadn't realised. Of course, it was not in the interests of the insurance company to point this out. 
They were, I'm sure, just happy to take the insurance premium from the installers with no expectation of ever having to pay out on the insurance policy. Ideal business for them. To their credit, the solar installers we eventually used said they would be changing their approach as a result of our information. And they made special payment arrangements for us in the light of our earlier bad experience. Before anyone points it out, it is definitely worth mentioning that you should pay by credit card if you can, since you are then covered by the Consumer Credit Act, with the credit card company potentially refunding your payments. That option wasn't available from our original solar installers though, presumably because of the additional cost of paying the credit card company's cut. And it's also worth saying that deposit protection insurance is different from guarantee insurance. That may be provided by the same insurer, but it's intended to protect your guarantee if you later have an installation problem and the installer has gone out of business. The second installer did a great job for us. There were a couple of small delays. They found that there was asbestos in our tiles and they needed a separate roofer to remove and replace the necessary tiles where the panels were going to be mounted. And the weather didn't always cooperate with getting people onto the roof to install the panels. But before long we had panels on the roof, a cable running down to our plant room and inverter and batteries installed there. We have our own water supply and sewage plant Take a look at the other videos in this Farmhouse Challenge series to find out about those. And we don't want to lose our water supply or the sewage plant in the event of a power cut. So the pumps and other equipment were wired to run off the battery if we lose mains power. It's not immediately obvious, but the inverter can't just take over the whole electricity supply in the event of a power cut, even with a fully charged battery. Our system is from Give Energy, and they provide an app to monitor the system, along with a web-based dashboard. With the amount of data available, you can get as clever, or should that be as complicated, as you want, since there will be occasions when it's more cost-effective to store your own power, and other times when it's going to be best to export it to the grid. There are YouTube videos out there which go into great detail on all that. But you certainly don't have to be clever or even interested to take advantage of a solar installation. A basic setup will give you the majority of the benefits. But the app provides hours of fun browsing the data. But ultimately, with experience of running the system under our belt, we hope that it will be looking after itself. As for the future, we're building a new garage and the planning permission requires an electric car charger to be installed. Give Energy have a new charger available, so we're likely to install that since it's integrated into the same app and is able to do things like charge the car only when there is sufficient solar power being generated, meaning that the car runs in effect on free energy. The roof of the new garage may lend itself to some more panels too, so we'll install a cable duct to run a new cable through in case we go that route, rather than digging up the new drive. Well, I hope you were energised by our solar power experiences. See you next time.